Hello everyone, my name is Cubic. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a 5FX server. It's one of my most requested videos to make, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and make one. So uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is obviously head over to the 5M website, where you'll be able to download uh, the artifacts. So you want to go head over to 5M.net. Once you're onto the 5M.net website, you want to click on the create your own server. The website might look a little bit different. 5M do change their website quite often. Once you're on here, you're going to then click on the host of your own server. And then you're going to come up to the setup guide. If you haven't already, make sure that you install Visual C++ on your computer. By default, it doesn't come installed. So if you're unsure, run the installation and it will tell you whether it's already installed or not. However, on my computer, I already have it. So I'm going to be heading over to the artifact server. So click on the link and it'll open up in a new tab. Now, the latest recommended artifact version is 3.9.2.2. So I'm going to download the latest version. Make sure to have WinZip, WinRAR, or anything similar to open up the 7-zip folder. Now I'm going to create a folder on my desktop called FX Server. You can call your folder whatever you like. And inside of that, I'm going to create another folder called Artifact. And I'm just going to drag it to the side. Now, coming back into your browser, you're going to be wanting to open up that 7-zip folder. And essentially, control A and drag and drop all of that into the artifact. And then this one can be then closed. Now, essentially, all you need to do is scroll down and look for a purple icon, this one here, which is going to be the FX server run and installer. It's going to do a couple of things, including opening up this pop-up. Make sure to click Allow. So, by default, it does give a registration pin. You can see here that my pin is 2021. By default, sometimes TXAdmin will automatically put 2021 inside of it and autofill it. However, sometimes this may not be the case and you might need to do this manually. If you do need to do it manually, again, look for the big blue box and it will say your pin to register. Just simply enter the pin into the box and then click link account. It's then going to take you over to the 5mcfx.re website and ask you to sign in with a CFX account. This will now link your account to your server. So I'm already logged into my Parelectric account, so I'm going to click on continue. Now it's going to ask you to create a backup password. Essentially, Let's say that the 5M logon servers were down. This is a backup password that you are able to use to be able to still log into your TX admin account, even without having to log in via 5M. So I'm just going to create a password. If I can. And then once you've done that, you're then going to click save. Now, from here, it's going to give you a couple of options. Make sure to read these carefully because just in case you don't want to have to do this again. However, we're going to create a default FX server using one of the popular templates. So we're going to click on next. The server name, we're just going to call it development server. And then click next. Now, like I said, you can use TX admin comes with a range of different templates. Now, we don't want to use custom, we don't want to use remote, and we don't want to use local. Make sure to look into these. These might be the best options for you. However, because we're going to be creating an FX server, we're going to click on popular template. Now here you can use an, an ESX based template or a CFX template. The CFX will allow us to run vMenu and stuff like that. ESX is obviously a framework that's economy based. We're going to be using the CFX default server. And then Essentially, this has created a data location that you will be able to run all of your files from. Just click save and then run the recipe deployer. Essentially, this is everything that is set up. This is how the server is going to generate. Click next. And then it's going to ask you for a license key. By default, currently as it stands, as of uh, June in 2021, Fiverr allows servers with up to eight slots to have 
or what they would call a premium key that would allow you to run EUP and other stuff like that. Now you're going to head over to Keymaster. You can either click on the Keymaster link here, or you can just type in keymaster.5m.net. It's going to ask you to log in, uh, but it's already logged me in because I've already got an account with them. All of these won't display. These are just my servers that I've got created. However, you're going to click on the register button. Now, display name. So this is something whatever is something unique to you and something that you'll remember it. So I'm just going to use tutorial. The initial server IP is going to be your public IP for home hosted. So head over to Google or whatever website that you want to use to find out your IP and just type in what's my IP. From here, I'll just copy my IP and paste it into the box. From here, you can then select the server. We're going to be selecting home hosted. And then sometimes it might present a box. Just type in home hosted. If for whatever reason you are watching this video and you are using someone like Zap or someone similar, then just select one of the appropriate options. Once that, confirm that you are a robot and then click on generate. From here, it's going to give you a license key at the top. However, when you refresh the page, the license key at the top will disappear. Not to worry. If you look down slightly down in the middle, you will see like a little blurred out box. Simply hover your mouse over it and you'll be able to copy it. Head back to the server deployer and paste it into the license key and click on run recipe. It's now going to deploy your recipe and deploy your server. Click on next. As you can see, the pop-up box did open up the resources folder, but I will go into that in a moment. Again, you can configure your, CF, your server.cfg file here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do that in a moment through code. Click Save and Run Server. It's going to generate a couple of things. Essentially, the thing that you're most looking for is this little CFX logo made up in ASCII. Once that has then displayed in your server, that essentially means that the server is now up and working. If there is any errors, it will pop up something like could not start resource chat. The first time that you load up your server, if it says that, don't worry, it needs to generate the chat resource. You'll now see that it's going through and it will say done. Now, just to make sure that that did fully work, I'm going to hit the restart button just to ensure that it did work. Okay, and as you can see, the chat resource has now started uh, and everything is now live. So technically, you now have a working 5M server locally hosted. However, we're going to go one step further and we're just going to quickly install vMenu onto the server. Most servers use vMenu. I'm just going to quickly show you how to use v how to set up vMenu on your server just so that if you need a menu or whatever, then obviously it's in place ready for you. So what we're going to do is all the links are going to be in the description as well. Uh, however, you're going to go over to Google again and then type in vMenu 5M. You can either go directly to Tom's GitHub or for easier purposes, we're going to head over to the CFX website. And then we're going to scroll down to the download button. Click on the click me. It's then going to show you his latest release. His latest release was 21 days ago from this video. And then we're going to click on vMenu. And then we're going to click Save. Once that's downloaded, we're then going to open it up. And then we're going to create... When, once we go into the vMenu resources folder, we're then going to create a new folder and we're going to call it vMenu. I'm going to close that. Drag and drop, same thing as always. Drag and drop them into the vMenu folder and click Close. However, we are going to be doing something slightly different. So because this is my development server and because I am the only one that's going to be on this server, I'm going to give myself all of the permissions. So essentially, we're going to be looking for the vmenu.everything permission, which is by the default line will be line 167. Now, all we're going to do is remove the hashtag that's in front of it. However, if this server, if you are intending to make this server public, or live, do not do this. I'm simply doing this because I am the only one that's going to be on this server and I am the only one that's going to be able to access it. Once you've removed the hashtag, click on save. 
and then exit Visual Studio or whatever code editor you use. Next, we're going to head back to the CFX default folder, and then we're going to open up the server folder, the server CFG. And then going to open it back up in Visual Studio. Okay, so now that you're here, uh, we're now going to go, you'll see the very default server CFG. We're going to enter in a couple of lines here. Now, this will be located in the description if you want to just copy and paste it. However, in my purposes, I'm just going to quickly type it out. So we're going to go exec, and then we're going to go resources slash vmenu slash config slash permissions dot cfg. Now, again, you don't have to type this out. You can literally just copy and paste this. However, what this is essentially doing is executing the cop permissions file that's in the resources vmenu config. So if we go back to the folder here, if we follow the path of it, it goes resources, vmenu, config, permissions. Underneath that, you then want to ensure vmenu, so to ensure that it starts, and then you're done. Now, when the server then starts up, it will then load up vmenu. If there's any issues, it will tell you in the console. So we're going to close this for now, and we're going to head back into TX Admin, and we're going to click on Restart. Now you can see here that it's instated the vmenu.server permissions, as well as it has created the environment, as well as it started vmenu. So now we should have vmenu. By default, the button is M, so we're gonna go try that out. So we're gonna open up 5M. Okay, so now that vmenu is open, ignore the EMV series, that's just because I have a graphics mod in the top left-hand corner. We're going to be clicking on here. So for now, it's called desktop-1qt. That's just the computer name that I'm running on. However, for you, it might be displaying localhost or it might display your computer name or whatever. Just simply click on that button. It's going to do some quick downloading files and then it's going to present you with a loading screen. This one, don't worry about it. You can move about if you want, if you're bored. Um, but for now, we're just going to stand here. Okay, so once the server is loaded you in for the very first time, you'll appear onto the server and now this is the server that you have just created. So to check whether vmenu is installed, we're gonna press our M button and vmenu appears. Now, because we've given ourselves the vmenu dot everything permission, we have access to absolutely everything. So every permission node has been available to us. Now, I'm not going to go much into vmenu permissions today. That is going to be covered in a different tutorial. So make sure to stay tuned on my channel to see that in the future. However, this is the end of this tutorial. If you do have any questions, please make sure you do pop them in the comments below. I also have my Discord server linked in the description. Please make sure if you do have any questions, I will generally respond quicker on Discord. But hey, if you have any other questions or queries, do reach out. Apart from that, have a wonderful day.